Hello, I'm Dr. Lee. Welcome to Practical Pain Management. In this video, I show you an ultrasound guided interscalium block for pain relieving treatment. I think ultrasound guided cervical nerve root block is more frequently undergone than interscalium block in the pain clinic. I use this procedure to mobilize the glenohumeral joint in severe adhesive capsulitis and hydrodissect the facial compressing the brachial plexus and thoracic outlet syndrome. I'd appreciate it if you could turn on English caption for better communication. Let me describe the anatomy of a brachial plexus. The brachial plexus is a network of nerves formed by anterior rami of C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. It supplies the efferent and efferent nerve fibers to the chest, shoulder, arm, forearm, and hand. The interscalene brachial plexus is the brachial plexus located in posterior cervical triangle and interscalene facial plane. This illustration shows a deep layer of a posterior cervical triangle. I remove the SCM muscle and yellow colored area is the posterior cervical triangle. Let's focus on the boxed region of low portion of a posterior cervical triangle. The interscalene brachial plexus is located in between anterior scalene and middle scalene muscles. The anterior scalene muscle arises from the anterior tubercle of transverse process of third, fourth, fifth, and sixth cervical vertebra and descend almost vertically is inserted by a narrow, flat tendon into the first and second rib. The middle scalene arises from the posterior tubercle of transverse process of lower sixth cervical vertebra. It descends along the side of the vertebral column to insert by a broad attachment into the upper surface of the first rib, posterior to the subclavian groove. Which level of cervical nerves includes anesthetizing the upper extremity for shoulder manual therapy. I review the articular branches of the shoulder joint in previous video. Please find and review. Suprascapular nerve arises from the upper trunk of a brachial plexus which is formed by the union of ventral rami of 5th and 6th cervical nerves. Supplying the articular surface of glenohumeral joint and posterior shoulder muscles. Subscapular nerves is not famous shoulder muscle in pain practice. The subscapular nerves are innervated by posterior division of a brachial plexus. There are some variations of a lower subscapular nerve origin. It arises from axillary nerve frequently. The subscapular nerve supply the anterior portion of a glenohumeral joint and subscapular muscle. Axillary nerve originates from the upper trunk, posterior division, posterior cord, and carries nerve fibers from C5 and C6. According to my clinical observation, my patients felt pain when I failed to block the C7 nerve. It is an illustration of a sclerotum of upper extremity, anterior and posterior view. It shows the C7 contribution of inferior aspect of a scapular and humerus. Which level of cervical nerves include anesthetizing the upper extremity for shoulder manual therapy? My answer is C5, 6, 7, complete block. Let's go to the clinical practice. Let the patient's spine oblique position. Please put supports under the shoulder and waist to help 
stabilize the position and make your patients comfortable. After scrubbing, cover the neck with a sterile cloth. What do I use to block the brachial plexus? I need 5 ml normal cell line with 12 ml of 2% methivacaine. I need 1 10 ml lure lock syringe. I will not use a 20 ml syringe because it is uncomfortable to control for my small hand. I will observe the interscalian brachial plexus, suprascapular artery, and subclavian artery. Sometimes, the suprascapular artery is placed in the middle of the needle trajectory and obstructs the needle pathway. I put the needle and move toward the lateral aspect of interscalian brachial plexus. I am trying to cover all nerves from C5 to C7 nerves. I wish you could realize how much I care while approaching the nerves, close as much as possible, but not touch the nerve. Now, I can see the interfacial separation between brachial plexus and middle scalene muscle. I should block the anterior and medial aspect of interscalene brachial plexus for complete motor paralysis and sensory loss. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.